Hello, Oodles and Noodles. We are back, Pen Bear and I, to celebrate yet another finishing of a book. A book series this time, actually. I just got done this morning, The Light of All That Falls by Jay's, James Islington? Islington? It's a little bit confusing. Australian author. And he wrote the Lycanius trilogy, which I have already done the review of the Shadow of What We Lost and An Echo of Things to Come. If you want to check those out, I will link them down below. And I gotta say, I gotta say I am torn. I'm torn on this one. Because overall, as the first trilogy of an author, I have to give this almost like an 8 on 10 just because it's his first work. And... It was fantastic. There was so much to this series to love and like, but there was also a lot that was problematic. Uh, I think I'll make a video that's kind of just spoilers and everything, just discussing my thoughts on the entire trilogy as a whole. But for this third book, from a, from a plot perspective, it is very good in the sense that it ties off so many things uh, really really rapidly this should have been probably a four or even five book series um, and that was probably the biggest issue i have with the third book is that it ties off so many things but it's rushed and still leaves as far as i'm concerned from a more i, I would guess this is something that's more picky it's, it depends really on the reader but there's so many things that are not properly detailed out uh, such as more explanation about what's going to happen to the world itself due to all this I mean it's a really really centrally focused on the four main characters I mean there will be a little bit of spoilers in this in the sense if you're watching this I'm going to assume that you've at least read or understand a little bit of the other two books so Asha, Weir, Davian, and Caden, who are pretty much our central focus characters throughout the entire series, uh, they are kind of coming to fruition in this book. Uh, Weir himself, honestly, as a character, is just... He's all right. He's not really developed much. I mean, he was supposed to be, I suppose, the political powerhouse of this series because the others are so focused more on the issue of just fighting against the baddies, but he, he's just not developed as well as he could be, unfortunately. Um, Asha is just very fascinating, seeing her development from like this sort of scared little girl in the first book to this powerhouse. I mean, she's pretty much, by the end of this series, the most powerful person on the planet, or at least from the way we get the gist of how powers work. With her tie through the siphon to the lith she is just just filled with essence to a point where I, I highly doubt she can be killed by anyone or anything on this planet at this point um so she's really really fascinating and overall her development was pretty well done but again she doesn't really get much to her i think the more the most development we see is is more in the second book in the third book it's just more her training becoming badass and that's pretty much it. Davian on the other hand, his journey was he 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 sort of held up as this titular beautiful human being who's just so perfect and just this demonstration of what's great and right in the world and i mean he is a good guy but he's nothing special really he's just a decent human being so i don't really get why he's held up to such a high standard um, i think really davian's purpose was to help caden and caden is where this series shines Caden's journey as a human being which is shown relatively well considering it's supposed to span over the millennia uh, so his journey with the other venerate and going through his own turmoil of having to deal with who he is as a human being is really what sets this series kind of apart it's what holds the concepts of time travel together and 
really helps solidify everyone else's purpose in the story, which is really just to help Caden make decisions. I mean, really, even though Davian is sort of pushed forward as the main character, Caden is really the main character and is the... I mean, he's really the whole reason the entire storyline exists. He is what has set things in motion, even though the other venerate did sort of play a part. He's really what... He, he was the leader, he's the baddie, he's the good guy, he's he's everything in this story. And his journey and his his shifting and changing and and I mean the time travel in the series could be extremely problematic, but yet it's used primarily for you to see all these different points in time and how Caden is evolving and shifting and changing and who he meets and what happens to him at certain points which just keeps pushing him forward towards the ultimate end goal of him ending the threat of Shamaloth. so he's just a wonderful wonderful character i mean he is i don't know if you can hear my dog barking i'm gonna kill it but i'm kidding i would never kill a dog and there's a lot of sensitive people out there but he is he's just fantastic and the ending which i will not spoil but the ending is just unfortunately you can sort of see the ending and a lot of the plot hole sort of how they're going to be tied up before they're happening if you just pay a little attention you notice what people are saying you can pretty much notice and figure things out way ahead of time but that doesn't stop them from hitting pretty hard that's one thing Whenever Caden is involved and you see plot holes get resolved by him or with him, it's just, and the end of the book, like, I, I nearly cried. I, I nearly cried. I had tears slowly. It's like I knew it was happening. I'm like, ugh. And it was just so, you know, normally I'm one of those people who doesn't want main characters to die. Like, I just... I, I know it's part of life and it's more realistic for people to die, but I just hate it, especially when it's characters I really enjoy. And it still really, really bothers me <laughs> that Caden uh, had what happened to him, but it's just, you know, very depressing, very depressing. I'm sure I just, I sort of just gave a spoiler in that one, but I, there's no other way to, to say it without ruining that moment. But holy moly guacamole it was fantastically done um so really my, my biggest complaints about this book is like i said it should have been four or five books there should have been more because there's just so many things are not explained well the del Shar, the the neskians i know granted um James said that he's possibly going to write another book series which explains more about the neskians and their involvement in this book but it, you just can't have multiple cultures suddenly come in with no explanation no real like figuring out of who they are as a culture and just have them be big baddies all of a sudden i mean shamaloth himself even though I, I have nothing against how it was resolved to get rid of him he just there wasn't enough explanation it just sort of happened and even the venerate, the dealing with the venerate and the other augurs, everything was sort of just tied off too coldly. I mean, people died. So many people died in this book, sort of off, car off camera. Like, they just like, were, yeah, this person died. And yeah, this person died. Oh, yeah, and they died. Or someone walks through and they're just like, oh, well, I guess this character's dead. And so you didn't really feel it. Characters who you actually enjoyed and liked just were wiped out very rapidly and with no proper explanation or emotion behind it. No one, none of the main characters happened to be around when they would happen. So it just kind of felt empty. And that's really how a lot of the, a lot of the background felt in this book. That's, that's my main issue. It's like everything that was kind of in the background, all the side characters, the Venerates, Shamaloth, everything sort of just went away. Any any issue just kind of went away on the side without there having to be any dealing with it like emotionally for us as the reader or for the characters within the book. Uh, I mean, as I said before, Caden's side, like most of the time, like you could really feel it through him, but still things were just, just sort of wrapped up too too easily, too neatly. 
it just kind of made everything anticlimactic at the end. You just didn't really feel it. I mean, it made it that everything uh, James had built up in the second book, all this like world and lore and this interesting aspects to it just kind of died out in this book. And uh, you're sort of just only left with the sadness and the, I guess the regret of knowing that Caden at least got what he wanted, but still had to leave for it to happen. It was, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm sort of torn on this. It, it, it had so much potential. And again, if I look at it, just the fact that this is his first trilogy, it was an amazing work for someone who had just started writing. Like it, it's pretty incredible. And it was very, very complex, especially to smush together into three books at a relatively small page load. If you look at them comparatively to, let's say something like, you know, people have compared it to the Wheel of Time and a little bit, little bit, I can see what they're saying, but overall the Wheel of Time is, is not even close to being anything like this series and it's not a fair comparison. I think, what is, I always forget, there's like 14 or 15 books in the Wheel of Time series. There's three in this one. not it's just not comparable you can't Robert Jordan had so well and and Brandon Sanderson had so much time to develop things uh, even the Forsaken I mean a lot of people compare the Venera to the Forsaken and the Wheel of Time and I see it to a degree but the Venera here in some ways were much more emotionally uh, certain of them like Caden's dealing with the Venera is so much more emotionally charged than anything between the Forsaken and Randall Thor within the Wheel of Time. Because let's face it, even though Randall Thor, for anyone who's read, he's sort of the incarnation of Louis Theron, who's used to know the Forsaken within the Wheel of Time, there's never really this huge emotional charging, like a regret or sadness, anything you're ever feeling from Rand. Whereas over here with Caden, there's a lot of emotion because he's supposed to have known these people for thousands of years. At the same time, you almost get to know very little about the venerate some of them it's like they're just suddenly there for a few moments and then he says a couple of things and then kills one of them and it's just like oh i'm so sad i killed you and boom so i don't know it's like it's hard to judge on these things because james although he is a good writer i think there could have maybe had a better editor to help him along because he just repeated a lot of things and, and did things in the same way where he, he just didn't develop enough of the, the the way that something could be expressed in a moment. Again, Caden's times with people were very emotional, but it just could have been edited a lot, lot better and improved on. Instead, they lost out on a lot of potential, I could call it like drawing us in so that we could feel it a lot more. But other than that, it's a decent book. It's a pretty fun book. I enjoyed the second one a lot more. The first, like, first book was a great setup. Second book was just really, really hit you. And third book really was all Caden. Was all Caden. Everything else that sort of was around it just didn't really do much of anything for me. It's just Caden's story and seeing it all get wrapped up together was just hits, it hits you really, really hard. But it would have hit a lot harder as an overall story in, in the sense of like the world really bringing you in if James had worked more to develop more of the world. And that could have happened by just having a fourth or fifth book. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's how I would end it. I, I, like I said, I'll make another video where I can actually really delve more into the spoilers and talk about the entire trilogy as a whole but i would still recommend checking out the third book it is pretty fun uh, it does wrap up things so you do get all the most of the answers that you would like to have and it's it's a tearjerker at the end it's it's really a tearjerker and really seeing how Caden and davian are so intrinsically linked together by so many different facets in life it's really sort of their story is sort of like brothers in a certain sense it's like they were family but instead of by blood it was through so many different circumstances that it's it's a really beautiful thing at the end of it i'll leave it at that beautiful story sort of a beautiful love story 
in a certain sense. <laughs> Not really, but it, it, it's family. That's what it is. It, it, it showcases the, the beauty of family. And just ignore a lot of the religious stuff. I don't know. Personally, I'm not a religious person. And there is sort of a kind of a preachy tone to this book where they're sort of discussing a lot of religious issues. And I don't really agree with the whole just believe faith kind of crap. But if that works for you, it works for you. It's not that much of a big issue in the book, but it does tend to be repeated quite a lot throughout this book. Whereas you don't have to deal with it that much in the first and second. So, yeah. Enjoy, my friends. Enjoy, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think down below. I am exhausted because I literally read this book for the last like, day and a half. I've barely done anything except be on my couch, like, reading through it. So I'm going to probably take a nap. Take a nap. Later, everybody.